mid six figure salary. All was good until about two years ago. He was injured at work in a near fatal accident between hospital bills and a lawsuit that we lost that ate up nearly all of our savings. I took a part time job while my husband was recovering. But when he fully recovered, we transitioned back into me being unemployed as my husband insisted that it was his role to provide. He currently is working two full-time jobs and Ubers on his off days to keep us afloat. He did everything and she took his money. It wasn't like she had her own thing going on. And while he's down, she's still taking. Bro, yeah, like, yeah, not me, at any know, point, when is she supposed to contribute to the relationship? She's just constantly taking, listening to her bitter ass, probably. What did Nino Brown Well, you know what? Say? Let me say this. I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it if my wife said, listen, I'm putting a little money to the side for us in case of an emergency. Right. But Communicate her, that. But her going into thinking that this is escape money. <laughs> <laughs> so where we at here now listen I'm video number three did her mother give her good advice <laughs> wife listen. kept a secret stash with her husband money and when times got hard she didn't even help out <laughs> fucking Jezebels oh shoot did I say that yes you did Damn, I'm sorry it's this jump podcast oh let's go am I the ass for not giving my husband my escape money when I saw that we are financially, uh, we, we were financially struggling. I'm a 34 year old female, have recently ran into a situation with my husband who's a 37 year old male. And I'm curious about if I am the ass here or not. So me and my husband have been together for eight years, married for seven. When I got married, my mother came to me privately and talked about setting aside money as a rainy day escape fund. If worse came to worse. My husband has never shown any signs of being dangerous and rarely even gets upset. But the way my mother talked about it, it seemed like a no brainer to have when me and my husband, I really don't like that. When my husband and I got together, um, we agreed <clears throat> I would be a stay at home wife. We are both child free. So that was never a concern. My husband made a comfortable mid six figure salary. All was good until about two years ago. He was injured at work in a near fatal accident between hospital bills and a lawsuit that we lost that ate up nearly all of our savings. I took a part-time job while my husband was recovering, but when he fully recovered, we transitioned back into me being unemployed as my husband insisted that it was his role to provide. He currently is working two full-time jobs and Ubers on his off days to keep us afloat. Here is where I might be the ass um, I do all of the expense management and have continued to put money into my escape account, although I significantly <laughs> decreased um, from seven fifty a month to just two hundred a month. My husband came home exhausted one night and asked about downsizing because the stress of work was going to kill him. <clears throat> I told him downsizing would not be an option as I had spent many years making our house a home and offered to go back to work. He tried to be nice, but basically told me that me going back to work wouldn't make enough. After an argument, my husband went through our finances to see where we could cut back. He was confused when he saw that I had regular occurring withdrawals leading back years and asked me about it. I broke down uh, and revealed my money to him. <clears throat> my money. Which not sit, wait, which, uh, which now sits at about 47000 After I told him, all this, he, jo he just broke down sobbing. His point of view is that I treated him like a predator and hid money from him for years, even when he was at his lowest. I told him that the money was a precaution I would have taken with any partner and not specific to him. He left the house to stay with his brother and said, I heard him on every possible level, but my mom says this is exactly what the money is for. First of all... Go ahead. She went wrong listening to her damn mother. Her mother is what got her into that damn a, a bit ass motherfucking me. And I'm curious as to if the mother is even married. If your mom is married, did she do the same thing and is she still married now? You don't do that. How you want to take a man's money and then he asks for it and then you don't give it to him? That's his money. How you going to have a rainy day? Wait, he didn't even ask for it. How you going to have He found out that she had Yeah, but still, he was down. He he was out of work. They was low. He, they had to downsize. And not one time did she say, you know what? I got this savings, this $47,000 in savings. Let me put that. God, let me Damn. put this into the household because my husband can't do it right now. 
<laughs> this is, what type of crib is that? This is the epitome of why men do not want to marry. And what women don't understand is the way that we think is it only takes a few, a few examples to mess it up for the masses. So like this man, he did it the way most women, or not most women, but most relationships would like to be. The man makes the, the, the bread, the woman is staying at home and she's the homemaker or whatever. He gave her everything. He gave it all to her, gave her the life that she wanted. Cause he said, she said it was mid six figures. So that means he was making some good money right? Mm -hmm. and they were doing well. And he got hurt. It wasn't like he was a bum. He got hurt at work. Stuff happens. What happened to the vows? Sickness what happened and, to it exactly? Through sickness and health. Right. Through, uh, you know, the good and the bad. Like he did everything and she took his money. It wasn't like she had her own thing going on. And while he's down, she's still taking. Bro, yeah, like, you, not me, at any know, point, when is she supposed to contribute to the relationship? She's just constantly taking, listening to her bitter ass, probably. What did Nino Brown Well, you know say? what? Let me say this. I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. If my wife said, listen, I'm putting a little money to the side for us in case of an emergency. Right. But Communicate her, that. But her going into thinking that this is escape money, you naming it escape money. Right. You, you already have one leg out the door. Right. You, or you, one foot out the you door, as, even, as they say. You never even put that foot you in the door. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. She coming into yeah. the relationship thinking on the negative, thinking that it's not going to last. Like, if you thinking that way, of course, that's what's going to happen. Like, it, it how you just going to last. How you just going to hide that? That's my money. Now, it was, exactly. it was our money at first. But the fact that you took it, so even if whatever the situation was and you left with money, you left with money that you did not run past me. That's my money. Yeah, if, you, now, if we keeping it, uh, if we keeping it a being like, so to now, me, if, I just don't, I don't like stuff like that. It's just, that's, that's the, on both, on both ends. I'm not yeah. saying it just for women, but on both ends. Like, I remember me, me, me and my buddy, we, we were talking about women and having their mad money because my, my grandmother my mother used to always say mad money you know what i mean i don't, I don't see a problem with you having a little money if, if you're a housewife i mean you should have a little money you know what i mean get your hair done get your nails done and continue right continue, because they don't have no continue, source of income, no in source of income. yes right. continue to look good but if we're struggling oh I need to I need to dip into that money even because I'm not gonna break my back paying a hundred percent of the bills working it. my ass off. He didn't even know about it. And you sitting on damn near fifty thousand dollars. Even even if we not struggling, you're not gonna take money, hard earned money that I worked for, and have it in your own account or whatever, and at least not have me aware of the way she. It. That's the sneaky. Part the way like, she went about it was like just that. real but, deceitful. Yes. It was very yes. deceitful. Yes. Very. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, don't have to, I, I do not have an issue with you putting some money to the side or having some money for yourself. But what I see in some of my friends' relationship or ex-relationships are is that they, they bust their ass and then something happened in the relationship or the marriage and then the woman, the woman leave or he leave and she got a whole furnished apartment right. or a house and he's sleeping on the goddamn floor because he got no money saved. And I tell my friends, yo, bro, listen, number one, never move in with somebody. If y'all get a crib, get a crib together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And number two, you always got to have some money for yourself. If she going to have some mad money, you make sure you good and goddamn well have some mad money for yourself. Yeah, so we got some you, emergency money. Uh, Well, her name is Kells. I don't know how she pronounced her screen name, but she's saying, I agree on many of these points. But I have to agree with her putting some money aside and ideally in investments because yes. that would have given her more than both for both of them. Yes. That, but see, that's you. the problem. Kel, you thinking about, OK, her her thinking about both of them. But initially in throughout this whole situation, she's just thinking about herself. She's thinking about, OK, you know what? If something happens, this is my money because of the way she's coming about it, saying escape again for me, like. Even if she wanted to put the money away for herself, that would be fine. But it's the sneaky part of not letting yeah. me know. That's the part that that's pissing me off the right. most. That I don't care if you take money for yourself. I'm I'm cool with that because the fact that you don't work, I understand you don't have any income. I'm good with all of that. <laughs> but if you even if you would have said, "Listen, babe, I got I got this me account that I just put money in for me. Just it's just mine. Okay, cool. We talk about it. Fine." 
But the fact that you just took money, you withdrew money from my account, put it in your account, and then don't tell me it. No, now, now see, listen, I'm going to have to get my sisters over here to put, put hands on you because yeah. you're playing with me. Okay. And so that me account, <laughs> that quote unquote me account, should have provided for both of them when he was down and low. So therefore, that just goes to show the mindset that she was in. She's not thinking about them as a union. If you married to this man, you should be thinking about the both of y'all. Yes. She's just thinking about herself. Yep. So she should just be ink. She should just be single. Fellas, do me a favor. Okay. All and right. She said that's how you pronounce it. Quick. All right. Quick. So now I know. Yes. Quick. She said that's how. She Fellas. Quick. quick. <laughs> Do me a Stop favor. shooting that little shit quick. <laughs> Do me a favor, fellas. Do me a favor. When you're courting these women, I need you to really pay attention to the most pivotal and important women in their circles. If it's their mama, their friends, whoever. Because you have to understand who are the people in her ear when she's trying to get advice or when she's going through it or she's upset because those be the people that a lot of times fuel the mindset of the woman that you're courting. So if she's around a bunch of bitter Bettys, she's probably going to have some bitter Betty mindset. Mm -hmm. If she's around a bunch of broke chicks, she's probably going to have a little broke mindset. If she's around a bunch of women who don't like to see their girlfriends in nice relationships and always going to make it seem like you the problem, you're going to have issues. So Definitely look into that circle, moms, aunts, friends, sisters, and that'll kind of tell you like who's the who the people she's confiding in. Yeah. Make yeah. your choice. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me let, let me add this. Let me add. I believe the days of a man coming home and turning over his paycheck are long gone. You you have to know your finances. If you're a woman or your <laughs> wife or your girlfriend that you live with, your partner, Maybe he whatever, was old whatever. School. Now, I mean, it could be, but you still must know. You, I'm telling you, those days are gone. You have to know how much money you have in every one of your bank accounts. So that goes both ways. Yes, it does. It does. Because you know, you turning over your money and next thing you know, you broke as hell. Anything can happen. Especially and, when you and, got somebody and, managing and then, and then guess what? it. And then you're not really going after them and seeing what they're doing. Let me add. And guess what? <clears throat> when it comes down to that time of divorce, you're paying alimony on top of the fifty to one hundred thousand that she has stashed. Right. And she's sitting pretty, sitting on that Raymore Flanagan in front of her. And guess what you got? You got that cheap shit that that was on that goddamn <laughs> late night commercial. It might be Raymore. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? it might be. What, Ray. What's that? What's that cheap shit? You got that cheap that like, cheap IKEA shit made out of motherfucking cork. <laughs> it might be way more inflamed again when she yeah. moved in. Yeah, yeah. But when it burned down, it ain't gonna be. Ooh, <laughs> you burned it. Damn. No, he did. Okay, okay. When it burned down, it ain't gonna be nothing. <laughs> you had to go to that thrift store and get you some furniture. <laughs> hey, look. Well, I you know, I'll let's say, wait a minute. He, say, he, didn't, he didn't say see, that see, B see. word. Did he say that B word? He what? said the B word. The B word. <laughs> he just said, my name left eye. I'll yes. burn this motherfucker down. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your name? My name Arson. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody, you must. Must protect yourself. You might, because I mean, no, rarely is a marriage forever, man. Rarely is it forever. Everybody must protect themselves. I'm sorry. I do. We do a lot of the red pill jokes. A marriage we do a lot is of not forever when people don't, when people get into it for the wrong reason. Well, a marriage ain't forever because somebody's going to die. Yeah, somebody's going to die, but I'm just saying, like, it, it works when people go into it for the right reasons and not just for the simple fact, oh, okay, you know what? He's going to take care of me or whatever benefits a person think they're going to get. That's what a lot of times why people get married. What? Nobody get married for love anymore? God, hey. Not really. <laughs> listen, quick. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> Listen, quick to over there. She, t she talking about. She says, "See, if he has some investments going on in an emergency fund, then he could get that Ethan Allen." See, uh oh. See, that's what I'm talking about. Ethan Allen ain't cheap. I, I like the yeah. mindset, but uh, if you think but I'm, but you know what, he should have had some investments before he got injured because they could have been living on that, like something like an Affleck type thing. But not even that. Like, if I'm thinking that my wife is going to be solid. I might not need no, no investments. No, I'm just saying in general. Yeah, you you should saying? always have some kind of investments. What do you mean? I mean, yeah, but that's not, I don't think that's necessary. A lot of people don't, might not want to be like super duper wealthy. So Wait a minute, quick, what you mean? F love, what them finances look like. Okay, oh, all okay. right, that's what, that's what you, that's, <laughs> okay. that's what you want? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
quick. <laughs> Look, oh, we, don't don't, don't, retract, that don't retract that little don't shit. Retract quick. Know your name now. Don't retract that. <laughs> don't retract that message now. We saw it. Hey, uh-huh. listen. Hey, you wasn't fast enough. Uh-huh. Gotta be quicker than <laughs> that. Eyes are faster. <laughs> yeah, gotta be quicker than that. Gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> hey, look, let me tell you something, man. Listen, man. Look, I've been married before, so I am a divorcee. Can, what, what, what are men considered? Divorcee, you divorcee. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a, I mean, look, I can, I, I can believe them. Exactly, her. I agree. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> See, I was smart in my divorce. I had an exit plan. Oh damn! I took the fucking iron board. It, see? Yeah, I mean, yo, you, listen, I am super petty. No, see, some bitter Betty. If you I bitter. got divorced, I'm taking all the bags to her earrings. <laughs> I'm putting. Damn. I'm putting. First of uh, all, you can buy more of those. Uh, well, that, that you're gonna spend a lot of time doing it. I'm a. I'm gonna put water in all her makeup. And I'm cutting what up. What if she don't wear makeup? Oh, okay. Then cool. And I'm cutting up all the nice panties. You got me. Oh my hey. God. Cutting them all. Go right. Look, me. Spend- I'm like, okay. I'm simple. I'll go buy some more. Hey, just n- reason why I need to buy some more. Hey. No, nope, you gonna spend this money? <laughs> I it am not gonna let gonna nobody be, gonna disturb be with these I my pull, I peace. My peace is important. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. 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 So what? are you, are you telling me that you have never done anything anything close to what that last video did? Toxic. No, oh, nothing, first of all, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, I never said I didn't do anything. I never said that I was an angel. I said now. I said now. So yes, I have my share of dirt. <laughs> okay. It's definitely gonna be some things I'm going to my grave with. <laughs> But hey, yes, listen, I had yo. flattened some tires, broken some glass windows, dented some cars, put some chocolate and bananas in gas tanks. I okay. told y'all she was <laughs> honey hot. Hold on, dip. hold on. Habanero oh, sauce over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Why was you so kinky with the gas tank? Why did you have to put the chocolate on the banana and then put it in the gas tank? Why you could just put the banana in there? That's real kinky. Okay. <laughs> she like, uh, she like I, I done crawled into some windows. Oh, for real? Who's Let me that tell peeping you in my window? Oh, this 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 is something we didn't even know. Yeah, Look, man. It, I, I done got some. I got some some stuff that I done. It was funny. It was fun. Look, hey, it was fun. Instead of taxi cab confessions, this podcast confession. Hey, confessions, like I said, it's gonna be some, yeah, it's some stuff that I would <laughs> never. I would yeah, never tell anybody. Spicy at the dark. <laughs> this joint at the dark, baby. <laughs> 